a lone wolf. I love the sea and I love to fish. My name is Johan Gran and I have been a fisherman since 1984. If you had a better seafood selection than usual this festive season, it's partly thanks to growing catches here in Sweden and across Northern Europe. This trawler used to harvest 20 tonnes of prawns and langoustines each year. Now it's twice that much, because European fish and shellfish numbers are on the rise. Nowadays we have a lot of humongous of prawns, uh, and the fish stocks has improved as well. In the North Sea, the Baltic Sea and the Atlantic, overfishing has declined drastically over the last 10 years. Let's take a look at the data available for 76 fish stocks. 10 years ago, only one in seven assessed stocks were fished sustainably. The rest were overfished, according to the EU's Directorate General for Maritime Affairs and Fisheries. This year, seven out of 10 stocks are fished sustainably. So how did the European Union make this happen? In part by tackling the problem of fishermen dumping the unwanted fish. Around a quarter of catches used to be thrown back in the sea. Most of those fish simply died. Now fishermen are changing how they work and their equipment to avoid catching fish that are too small or species they don't want. No one with some sense in your head want to uh, drop good food just over the rail. It's just silly. So uh, after a while, they are figuring out how to manage this. And it starts with something they call landing obligation. What landing obligation means is fishing vessels must bring to land all their catches of controlled fish species, big or small, so no more dumping at sea. Accidental catches count against quota, but they can be reduced with selective nets like this one. All the bycatch, like fish and uh, other stuff that you don't want, hit the bars and go up and swim further on. What about in other countries? Here in France, researchers are testing selective nets made for local fishermen. They're looking for a large choice, fine-tuned for individual sites and species. The gaps in the classic lozenge meshes tend to close when being dragged by a trawler with the pressure on the knots. To get square mesh nets, you just have to turn 45 degrees and you get a mesh that's much more open. And if you turn another 45 degrees, you get nets that get very good results, especially in the Celtic Sea and the Western Channel, because they're suited for letting the small fish out. Some fishermen tell us they don't have any more waste in their catches. This huge change wouldn't have been possible without four years of coordinated efforts by EU countries to roll out this landing obligation. Here in Brittany, a third of vessels have adopted selective gear to cope with the increasingly strict regulations. All European fishermen are in the same boat in a way. They fish with the same quotas and sell to the same market, so it's normal there should be common rules and regulations to ensure fair competition between different fishermen from different countries. Back in Gothenburg, the fresh catch goes up for auction. Fishing is now one of Europe's strongest growing economic sectors. Increasing selectivity is helping to boost profits. Fishermen fulfill their quotas with more valuable products, and that in turn brings them more income. In many cases, we have rather small quotas, and we realize, the fishermen realize very early, that to handle this, we really need to, to start working to prepare for the landing obligation so that we really can get the best possible fish and the best possible price, of course, out of what we do fish. Europe aims to restore all its fish stocks to sustainable levels by 2020. A decade of hard work is finally paying off, helping the sea, fishermen and Europe's consumers. It will be only prawns. I mean, with no bycatch at all. Most of the small fishes go up and go out and uh, live a healthy life until we meet again. <laughs>